In the latest shameful attack on free expression in our arts and cultural sector, this week a Scottish MP and lawyer has been no platformed by a comedy club from giving a performance at this year's Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Joanna Cherry was cancelled and no platformed by the Stand Comedy Club for being a lesbian who holds gender critical views that a person's sex is immutable. The Stand in response issued some feeble excuse that key members of staff had been unwilling to work on the show. Completely disingenuous, given that they could easily have brought in staff from one of the other comedy clubs in the chain that they operate. It's dismal to see an arts organisation engage in no platforming and tying themselves in mealy mouth knots trying to justify it. The mental gymnastics involved in these organisations silencing people, yet thinking themselves morally superior, are quite something to behold. But this is the way things are now, across the cultural sector in the UK and beyond. The Edinburgh Fringe Festival is on the brink of collapse. Box office sales at last year's Fringe were down an enormous 30% on pre-pandemic sales, as performers are sick of being fleeced by promoters and lettings agents, and audiences turn their back on a festival that exclusively books woke performers of questionable merit and turns away any performer who veers away from fashionable progressivism, regardless of their potential for ticket sales. With ticket sales falling off so rapidly, the 76-year-old Fringe Festival, the largest arts festival in the world, is unsustainable and will be greatly diminished within the next few years because those that run it have chosen to aggressively push an extreme political agenda through a long-term militant campaign of no platforming censorship. And it's happening across the world. A few years ago, the Melbourne Comedy Festival's prestigious main award, named The Barry in deference to and celebration of Australia's greatest comedic export, Barry Humphreys, was unceremoniously renamed after the festival distanced themselves from Humphreys when he himself expressed critical views regarding surgical transgenderism, comparing it to mutilation. This banishment came despite him being widely considered one of the greatest comedians of all time, who exported Australian comedy all around the world to huge acclaim. Upon his death a few weeks ago, the festival director, Susan Proven, who re-elects herself every few years, issued some insincere, corporate, vomit-inducing statement about the festival finding a suitable way to honour Humphreys, the very woman who instigated his ostracisation. It's not just arts festivals, it's live venues, theatres, art centres, comedy clubs, all across the Western world. Artists are not welcome unless they're parroting woke, fashionable, progressive views. You could be capable of selling thousands of tickets, but if you're not pushing the right political agenda, you're no platformed and censored. It's prevalent in the publishing world, as we've seen with the cancellation of J.K. Rowling. If you can no platform the world's best-selling children, author of recent times, then you can silence anybody. And of course all major publishing houses are now employing sensitivity readers to go through their back catalogues, editing, chopping bits out, rephrasing paragraphs here and there, so as not to offend the sensibilities of their presumed faux liberal self-righteous audience. No one's safe from this, not even Roald Dahl, Agatha Christie or Enid Blyton. Quite frankly, if I wanted my seven-year-old daughter to read a watered-down, clumsily reworded version of Roald Dahl, I'd buy her a David Williams book. And whilst the old classics are all being revised and blandified, don't expect to be entertained or amused by any new literary offerings anytime soon, as in the publishing world of today, authors are prohibited by their lived experience. If you haven't lived through it, according to publishing doctrine, you shouldn't be writing about it. If you're a man, you shouldn't be writing a female character. If you're white, your characters shouldn't be black. If you're straight, you shouldn't be writing from an LGB perspective. Quite what you're supposed to do if you want to write a book from the perspective of a tap dancing octopus or a space alien who identifies as a nipple is anybody's guess. 
but don't expect anything too imaginative to come out of the publishing industry any time soon. This grim cultural control is of course also happening in UK TV, a world from which one of the greatest sitcom writers of recent times, Graham Linehan, has been exiled for his unfashionable yet entirely reasonable political views. He could write the funniest TV comedy you're ever likely to watch, but in the current climate it absolutely would not reach your TV screens. Straightforwardly it's modern day McCarthyism isn't it? And what are we left with? What culture are we left to enjoy? What are we offered in the way of entertainment and escapism? A slew of insipid trash. Our cinemas are filled with mind-numbing, infantile Marvel superhero films, sanitised to within an inch of their life, targeted to appeal to both children and also millennial and Gen Z adults who are in a perpetual state of arrested development, having never been impelled by society to grow up. You won't find any comedy in your cinemas or on your TV screens. Too risky, too easy to offend people. And regardless of how good your product might be, if it offends the woke faux liberal cancel cultists, then it's removed from distribution and whipped off your TV and cinema screens quicker than you can issue a groveling, insincere, desperate, begging, career-saving apology on Twitter. And so we're forced to live in this dull, sanitised culture of suppression and dishonesty. You're free to switch on your televisions and be bombarded with an endless brazen barrage of lunatic propaganda so unashamedly detached from reality that it makes you question your own sanity, just so long as you're prepared to pay your licence fee, of course. And if not, be prepared to receive your regular intimidating letters, threatening you with sinister visits, prosecution and perhaps even prison. And what are your options if you want to create something yourself? Well, you can create what you want and post it online. But online platforms come with their own censorious rules and regulations, soon to be made far stricter as our corporate shield politicians try to pass increasingly draconian online harms legislation through Parliament and legacy media try to dictate the cultural narrative by chucking around terms like disinformation and misinformation. Or if you're based in Europe, you can uproot and try to go to the USA, where protection of free speech is ingrained in the Constitution. No such protection exists for residents of the UK. It can be censored and silenced indiscriminately, with no legal recourse. It's clear we're living in very oppressive times, made worse by the fact that our oppressors falsely present themselves as being liberal. It hardly needs reiterating, but they're far from liberal, they're straightforwardly intolerant authoritarians of a type that time and again we've historically had to fight against to preserve our freedoms. And right now, that's a battle we're losing. Please do like and subscribe, and for early access to all my content, support me on Patreon, or otherwise make a contribution via PayPal by following the links below this video. I've got a new tour date in Southampton, tickets now available, and my latest stand-up set is free to view on the Comedy Unleashed YouTube channel, links for which you can also find beneath this video. This channel only exists with your support, so please do contribute where you can. Thanks for watching.